Well, like it says, fire trucks at the lake. And we're in Woodland, Washington, at the lake. So that's what's happening today. So. Well, like it says, this is a steam fire engine built in 1899. And I guess they're going to get it. It's, it's fired up. I guess they just haven't got it totally charged the lines yet. But they're supposed to pump some water with it here right directly. A little bit before my time on the fire department, but that must have been fun to work with something like that. And this is a hand-operated pumper truck. I you might, you might want to put it. But anyway, they got the handles here on the sides. You can see right here. And you pump those, and then you can see the other one on the other side, and you pump those up and down and pull the water out and get it to come out wherever you need it to come out. Well, a few minutes ago, we were pumping water with this thing. There was, there was me and a couple other guys, and we were pumping these hand handles, and we did get water to come up out of that deluge gun out there. But I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't have to fight fire with one of these. Mercy. Well, this is a engine from Rathrum, Idaho. <clears throat> I think it's a 47 Ford. I'd have to go look at the sign on it. But I think that's what it is. <clears throat> And walk up to it here and see what it see what it says. That's a 1947 Ford, so that's that's the uh, vintage of it. This is one of the old style engines where <clears throat> you had to ride tailboards. This this of course is all your pump controls here. This is the input, and this one would be an out, and these here would be. For um, routing which water goes where as with these these other here and this is for priming the pump and here's your, your gauges but this is where the guys rode on the back so this is what they call a tailboard you'd have your your bigger hose up in there and then the handles on the side here is where you held on on this rig Later on, they had a bar going across that you could hang on to. They got this thing on a trailer, so get some of the some of the ramps in the way here a little bit. This is a rig I'm totally unfamiliar with. It's a 1917 Republic. I've never heard of Republic, so uh, it's a new one on me. Notice it does not have balloon tires. It has hard rim tires on it. This is a definite antique from 1917, from the looks of it. Also, the wooden ladders, they don't use wooden ladders anymore. They're too easy to burn out. You have a ladder in area where there's a fire, and a wooden ladder can burn out from under firefighters. So, those don't work anymore. This thing also has gas lights, and it looks like the price of it was $1,650 back in 1917. I guess that was probably a pretty good sized piece of change back in them days. Before my time, anyway. And it's two years before Grandma and Grandpa were even married, so that kind of dates things there. Anyway, this is a Republic Model 11. It sold for $1,650, it says here on the, on the sign in 19, 1917. Must have been a pretty good sized piece of change. I'm totally unfamiliar with it. It has, has solid tires rather than air, air, air tires. So. This engine is an American La France 1914. It's actually older than that one we just looked at. And it's from the city of Everett, Washington. Everett's just north of Seattle, just a little ways. And this also has solid tires on instead of, instead of balloon tires. So, got some real antiques here. Classy looking engine, though. It must have been interesting fighting fire with that. This engine here is a Mack. It's from the city of Woodland. It's a retired engine now, as there's no hose in the hose bed, so it's not. I thought it might be a backup engine or something, but there's no no hose on it, so that means it's out of service and retired. Because if it had any, also the tools are gone. The uh, axe is missing on the side here. And you walk up here a little bit closer. 
This is a engine real similar to the Seagraves that we got in 1978. And uh, didn't have to ride tailboards anymore. You had seats back inside here that you could get to. And so no, no more hanging on, hoping you didn't get bucked off. This is an intake here. This is where your water goes in. And your pre-connects are here. Tank to pump that, set valve. And this is your pressure coming in. This is your pressure going out. So that's your controls for the for the pump. And up here, if they were still there, there'd be hoses up here in the in the what would be your cross lays. This is a 49 Mac. It came from the city of Kalama, which is just up the road here a little ways, not too far away. It's a pretty classy looking engine though. I like the looks of it. You get three men in the in the cab here. If everybody was good friends and the turnouts weren't too big. That axe that was missing on the other engine we just looked at. This is how it would be stowed on the side of the side of the rig. And then back here on the back is where your where your uh, three and four inch hose would be. And then they've got instead of cross lays they've got on the sides here. They've got uh, quick connects that way. This is a 1928 Peter yeah, Persh sure from yeah. Woodland, which is where we are right now. So this is one of the city of Woodland's probably close to original engines. Might have some older than that, but this is a Peter Persh. We had some of those when I worked for the city of Milwaukee. We had to, we had Persh for our mainline engines. Yeah, has an intake cover right here. And it's Persh, Peter Persh. And these would be for out, this would be out, you'd put an inch and a half or two inch on here. Well, they're going to pump up the steam powered ones, so we'll go over there. Well, we'll take a picture of this big old, this here's a Pierce. And it's the front line engine for the city of Battleground, which is south of here a little ways. I'd love to be going with those guys, but health reasons I can't do it no more. They, they cut me off at the pockets when I had my heart attack, so that was the end of the road. And they got some water squirting out over here. That old steam pumper works pretty good. But I'm still glad I didn't have to fight fire with it. That seems like a lot of hard work, especially that hand pumper right next to it. You got one. The porta tank, and you can see on the back of the tender or this water tank here, water truck. It actually is a quick dump, and you can you can uh, dump the whole tank of water into into a porta tank real quick. So when you're fighting fire in an area where there's no hydrants, the porta tanks can be real handy to have, especially if you're running tankers. Here's that steam pumper working here. Well, it's a craft. it, and there's the water right there going out over into the lake. This is that steam pumper working. This is a Mac from the city of Portland. I'm not sure the year on it. I'm thinking 1950 something, but I'm not real sure. But it's a Mac, bigger in life. It's an open cab. To read the read oh, 49. Well, I was off a little bit, but yeah. Seventeen thousand dollars for that rig. It says here on the sign. Well, their their engines now cost about five hundred thousand dollars. They're not. 
they're not uh, seventeen thousand dollars anymore the last ones we bought for the city of rainier when i was there the the, the uh, aerial pumper ladder was um was four hundred and ninety thousand and the new engine one was but about five hundred and ten thousand but this is from the city of portland fire department in portland oregon and down here on the bottom the y y fitting here this one and this one these are gated these are gated uh, on each side here and that's an intake for the pump and this ladder here with the hooks on it right up here is the roof ladder these these pull out and you turn them and they'll hook on the peak of a roof so you can run up a ladder that way and this other little small ladder here is an attic ladder you use it inside of a house going from one floor up to a, into a small crawl space and the hose bed back here is empty they got a cross uh, a pre-connect here on the right and another pre-connect here on the left but other than that the hose bed hose bed is empty and then coming down the other side here you have the hard suction lines and a pike pole the pike pole is good for getting into into places it's got a hook on the back so you can shove it up to a, 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 a plaster wall or something reach in and rip it rip a wall down if you have to get to it and here's the other intake on the other side here and then you've got your got your uh, valves open or closed and these are all closed So anyway, that's from the city of Portland. Okay, we're going to run the hand pumper here. I'm glad I didn't have to fight fire that way. And you see the water coming out the deluge gun they got back behind. This is how they used to fight fire way back when. Glad we had hydrants and pumps. <laughs> well, the LA County did Fire District 5. That was the center there first. Okay, yeah. Good old Ford there. Make sure you smile. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it's a. A, a in service engine because it's got a hose in the cross lays and the booster lines and they got hose in the bed too so it, evidently it's it's capable of pumping pumping water and fighting fire